I am Sheena Hogue, a published author of How to Get a Bachelor's Degree with Little to No Debt. I am a financial professional that has been in the industry for over 10 years, helping clients to accumulate wealth and protect it. Today, we're going to discuss entering the workforce, transitioning from a student to a working professional. At the end of this course, you will be able to analyze your paycheck with holding and understand the basics with money management. It's graduation day, the day that you look for your whole college career, a day that you're excited because now you're beginning to enter the world as a working professional. I'm sure your teachers and family and friends have tried to prepare you for this day. I'm sure they told you that when you get to your first job to make sure you look professional, to make sure you outwork everyone in the office, to make sure that you show up on time and show the talent and abilities that you have to offer the world. In most cases, you probably looked at what you're likely to make when you begin this new career. But one thing that most people don't tell you about is what the actual paycheck or the net pay will look like from your job. And that's what we're gonna talk about here today. Your paycheck. On your paycheck, you have several components. The first is your tax withholdings. You have your federal tax withholdings, your state tax withholdings, FICA, Social Security, and FICA, Medicare. How does it get completed? On your federal tax withholdings, whenever you start a new career, your employer will, will provide you with a W-4. On that W-4, you will elect how many exemptions you want in regards to your taxes. So if it's just you, you may put one exemption. If you have kids or you are the head of the household, you may put more. That is the same that will go to your state. So if you put one for your federal, usually you will go one for your state, meaning just yourself. It's all you want to claim for your taxes at the end of the year. Next, we have FICA. FICA is the Federal Insurance Contributions Act. Monies for FICA go into Social Security and Medicare. In some cases on your paycheck stub, you'll just see Medicare and Social Security. In other cases, you will see FICA, or you may see some other abbreviations. FICA is typically 7.65% of your gross income. So whatever amount you make is usually deducted by roughly 7.65% to go to the FICA insurance, in which you will be responsible to pay. Your employer will pay the other half, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about the self-employed taxes. Again, when you start your career, your employer will provide you with who they offer for health insurance. So maybe Blue Cross Blue Shield, Cigna, Aetna, United Healthcare, whomever. But on that, they will offer you a list of benefits. And you can decide if you want to do PPO or HMO, which each plan will state specifically what does that mean in regards to if you're required to have a referral when you go to the doctor or if you're not required to have a referral, as well as who are the doctors and providers that are in the network and doctors and providers that are out of network. This is very important to look at and read through because if you were to get sick or just go in for your annual checkup, you want to make sure that you go into a provider that's in network provided by your insurance company. Another thing that you will see is usually an option for HSA, which is a health spending account or flexible spending account. Now these are monies that are set aside to pay for additional health insurance health costs that may not be included or covered by your health insurance. For example, if you want to get contacts or your copay or any other medical emergency, let's say you have to get a surgery or something of that nature, things that you may have to pay out of pocket until your deductible is met. If you save up money in an HSA or FSA account, they will automatically draft from those accounts first before coming to you to ask you for the money. One of the greatest benefits of an HSA or FSA account is that it's pre-tax dollars. Again, with each of the healthcare providers that you have through your employer, they will give you a list of benefits and things that you wanna look through. One thing you wanna ask about is your deductible, meaning if your deductible is not met, how much out-of-pocket costs will you have to pay? Are there any other ways to meet your deductible that you don't have to pay for? Maybe they have programs and games that you could um, sign up for in which they will give money towards your deductible so that you're not responsible for it. But there's a lot of 
options and things that you want to look into in regards to your health withholding. Next on your paycheck, you will usually see something in regards to retirement. So they may offer a 401k account or 403b account, 457 account. With these type of retirement accounts, they will allow you to save for retirement. So your traditional retirement account will be pre-tax dollars, meaning you're not paying taxes on it today. You pay taxes on it when you retire and take the money out. Or you also have a Roth account. The Roth accounts you pay taxes on today, but then later on when you take the money out, you don't pay taxes on it. So there are a few benefits to each one, but this is something that your employer will ask you as soon as you start working. Let's say you are an entrepreneur and you are self-employed. What does this look like for you? If you are self-employed, of course, you will not receive a W-4 from an employer. Instead, you are not responsible to pay your own taxes. So self-employed will fill out an estimated tax form from the IRS in which you will estimate how much you plan to receive each quarter or for the year and pay taxes accordingly. So each quarter you will fill out this form and fill it and send money to the IRS in regards to how much you think you will make this quarter or in total for the year. That will all be based on the type of industry or the type of company that you have, what you're billing for your services. In regards to your health insurance, again, you will not get something from an employer saying, hey, this is the type of health insurance you will have. Instead, it is now your responsibility to go online and look into those companies like Blue Cross Blue Shield, Cigna, Aetna, United Healthcare, and see which type of health insurance will work best for you. Keep in mind the deductibles. In most cases, if the health insurance bill is low, then usually you have a larger deductible. So you wanna be mindful of, let's say if I were to get sick or need you know, an emergency or a procedure done, how much of a deductible will I have to pay before the insurance company will come in to cover it? Do I have enough set aside in savings to pay that deductible? Another thing, what are the co-payments looking like? What will the co-payments look like when you go to the doctor? Are they gonna be $20 or are they gonna be $75? Can you afford to pay that if you should, if you were to go into the hospital or go to the doctor for a checkup? So your health insurance will be a little bit different because now you are responsible to look into the companies and figure out the rates that you're most comfortable with. Again, you can still choose from PPO and HMO, but always, again, you want to look at your deductibles to see how much of a deductible you will have to pay before the insurance companies come in to pay for you or to cover your expenses. And last but not least is your retirement. If you're just getting started and you're not making a whole lot, maybe it's just you and you don't have employees or anything like that, you can always go to a bank and open up a traditional or Roth individual retirement account. For those accounts, the maximum amount each year varies, but currently for 2020, it's around $6,000 if you're under the age of 50. But of course, this amount can vary each year and you will begin to save for retirement that way. If you do begin to have employer, employees and your company grows, then you can look at the other options for retirement account, such as a SEP IRA or a simple IRA. Depending on your business needs and what, you're, what you can afford to save for yourself or want to even include your employees, what they can afford to save for themselves or if you want to contribute to their retirement accounts, those would be some other options that you can look into to see how you could, again, save for retirement for yourself as a self-employed individual. So there are a lot of things to consider when you begin to work on your own at the graduation day. You have your federal tax withholdings, your state tax withholdings, your health insurance, and what does those withholdings look like? How much will that cost? And then you also have your retirement withholdings. How much do you wanna save for retirement? Again, you don't want to get in a predicament where you're just thinking about today. You always want to think about tomorrow and think about your future because no one plans to work, you know, forever. There always comes a point where you want to stop working or maybe do um, a less stressful, maybe a less, um, not as high paying type of role as you get older. So you always want to, again, plan for today, but think about tomorrow. What are some things that you could do? the plan for your tomorrow, and that's why you want to think about your retirement savings, even at your first job. So I know you may be thinking, oh, I'm so young, I'm only 20, 21, I have 
30, 40 years before I retire, but still save something for retirement. Even if it's $50 a paycheck, you want to save something because over time, little by little, we'll begin to accumulate just by saving small or gradually over, you know, 40, 50 years until you retire. Managing money. Now that you've received your first paycheck, you want to begin to think about how you will manage the money. So first you wanna understand your net pay. We talked about all the different withholdings you have with taxes, health, and retirement. Now you can actually see what can I afford to live off of. Another thing you want to consider is how often will I receive this money? Is it once per month, every other week, or twice per month? But those are questions that you really wanna see and understand. Because as you begin to look into housing, there are certain times where bills will be due. So for your a first apartment, usually you have to pay a security deposit if you don't have any credit history or no credit, or even if you do have any credit history, most apartment complex will ask for a security deposit based off your credit history. So that is one thing that you wanna see, how much will I need to have for a security deposit, deposit when you go to look for into your first apartment. The next thing you wanna consider is utilities. To get the electricity cut on or the gas cut on, if you don't have any credit, they may ask for a deposit. It's usually not a lot, but that is something that some utilities companies will ask for because you don't have any credit. Once you establish it the first year, they don't ask you anymore, but you do want to have money set aside or to think about or to consider deposits for like a security deposit for your apartment and a security deposit for your utilities. Now for an apartment, they may give you the security deposit back at the end of your lease as long as they're able to you know, as long as everything in apartment is well, as far as they don't have to do any major repairs or any, nothing was missing, they will tend to give you back that security deposit, but that's something to be mindful of. When you decide to look for housing, you also wanna think about how much will your monthly rent bill be? Because now you understand what your paycheck looks like and you don't wanna be broke, basically just paying the rent. You still have to eat and live life. So should you consider having a roommate to reduce your expenses some does that look feasible does it look feasible to maybe go stay home for a couple years to possibly pay off debt and that leads me to my next point how much debt do you have do you have student loan debt car notes or credit card debt if so how much is, are your minimum payments because your minimum payments now all these things begin to add up Whenever you think about debt, you always want to try to pay a little bit more than your minimum payment. So even if it's $2 more, little by little, it will help to resolve the debt a lot quicker. So that's one thing you want to think about. Then next is your savings and investing. Of course, we talked about investing a little with the retirement, but you also want to think about your savings account. If there was an emergency that happened, how quickly can you get to the monies so that you could pay for it in cash? You don't want to have your emergency fund be your credit card because with your credit card, you're going to always have to pay interest and things of that nature. So as a first year, you know, you're just starting out as a working professional, I would say start trying to build a savings account. The goal is usually to at least try to have at least $1,000 to start off, but try to do something. Whether it's $20 every paycheck or $50 every paycheck, you always want to save some money for tomorrow. So your savings account could be in a traditional savings account or it could be in an online savings account. Some things to consider would be the interest rates. How quickly can you get the money out? Are there any restrictions to the money, such as you have to have a certain balance in the account or they'll charge you a fee, something like that. Those are all things to think about when you begin to think about opening a savings account. And then for your investing, one easy way to start is with your retirement at your employer. You can save that way, even if it's something small, again, you still have so long to retire. So little by little, it'll add up. And not only that, but you have compound interest, which is a blessing. So those are things that you can look into for investing. A great resource for you would be bankrate.com, in which they have several calculators on there where you could understand how to calculate your net pay, um, how to pay off your debt sooner. They have calculators for that, auto loans, car no, uh, auto loans, credit cards, um, student loan calculators. They have all type of calculators. You can also look at bankrate.com to see what is the rate for savings accounts currently, as well as what are the rates for auto loans. 
if you had to take out a car note, what are the average rates in the industry? So bank rate has a lot of great resources on it that you can look into as you begin to manage your money as a working professional. In conclusion, you always want to review your withholdings at the beginning of each job. You want to ensure that your employer entered the correct withholding so that you don't owe the IRS at the end of the year. You also want to consider your net pay as you begin to create the lifestyle that you want to have. Everyone loves to make money, but oftentimes we don't think of the tax withholdings and health withholdings and other withholdings that we have coming out of our paycheck. When we think of a job, we only think about the gross income, but we don't think about the net pay. And the net pay is what we live off of to determine the lifestyle that we can afford. I hope that this webinar has been insightful for you. If you have any more questions and want to go a little bit more in detail about any one of these topics that we discussed, please contact me at educationoverdebt.com. My email is info at educationoverdebt. Thank you for joining me for this webinar. I look forward to hearing the success stories of each person.